All right. The next person we have coming on is Jangles, who wants to talk about um, trans in sports and, or uh, or trans kids. I don't know which one he's going to go uh, go off on. Okay. So uh, here's Jangles. Jangles. Hello. Jangles. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, there he is. What's up? Oh, you're on. I am on. So go ahead. Uh, uh, your your topic. Go ahead. Okay, dealer's choice. Lauren, do you want? Uh, I'd like to ask you about like, why do you think the trans people don't belong in sport, and or what's your problem with like uh, puberty blockers and other affirmative health care for trans kids? So dealer's choice. Oh, oh man. Hmm. Both very fun topics. Um. Ooh. We can get to both real quick. Okay, we'll do we'll do sports. Just to, I'll just pick that. Um, cool. All right. Well, I don't think they should be in sports because there are significant biological differences between the sexes. Uh, even post getting hormone treatment, many transgender um, male to female still have they've already gone through the puberty process typically and gotten a larger heart, larger lung capacity. So even if they have gotten their levels down to the same rate in testosterone as a woman, they still have an advantage after having gone through puberty. This is very backed up by the data. Uh, you know what? Maybe and perhaps I'm, I'm there actually, is an I'm very uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. I'll say uh, I'm very familiar with the data. So why, what drives the primary sex differences between men and women in terms of like sports performance? What is the primary driver there? Uh, testosterone levels. Not and... talking about trans people, just the general differences between the sexes. Yeah, definitely. Um, testosterone levels and the puberty process makes men quite different from women. Yeah, almost exclusively it comes down. Yeah, almost exclusively it comes down to testosterone. So I don't so I don't like this argument that because men and women are different, that means that trans people are automatically different. Like, that's a bad argument because trans people presumably like every single trans person who is up for competition in any sort of like regulated events, they've gone through hormone replacement therapy to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like this just it's not like this, this dude woke up one day and walked into a, a female soccer league or something decided that uh, they wanted to compete it's not, it's not how it happens so people undergo a lot of this hormone replacement therapy for sure and the yeah and would you agree that the main reason that uh men and women are different in this regard is due to the uh muscle mass that men can place on because of that testosterone right the the increase mm -hmm. in protein synthesis that testosterone provides is like that's that's it but um, there are other things there, but that's by far the main main benefit. I think there are significant biological differences in women and men, even regarding just where their body mass is. Like you can, body mass is the primary uh, thing. but well, well, their body mass and where their core is. Like men and women actually have a different center core for where their balance well, is. Mechanically, this, yeah, well, biomechanically, this doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter in sports performance all that much. Really? You don't think that matters yeah, really. in sports performance? I mean, we can check nope, that out not right where, now. Where your core is, but one is going to be very different from person to person. It has more to do with like individual anthropometry, like where how long your limbs are, and there are average differences there. But like where your core is, this isn't really meaningfully discussed in like biomechanics in terms of like an advantage in sports performance. Uh, this so study, what, what sorry, I'm just looking at a study: core stability and athletic performance in male and female lacrosse players. This is studying particularly mm -hmm. lacrosse. Um, do, 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 do. I just want to make sure it's actually differentiating between where men and women's cores are. Oh, there's definitely, well, make sure when you do this that core strength is obviously going to be a factor. Well, no, this isn't about strength. Like, but that has to do with, like, well, the title said strength. This is core stability, actually. Core stability. Stability has to do with, like, strength and muscle capacity, muscle endurance. For sure. Okay. Well, okay, my point is, regardless, is that there is an obvious difference between male and female muscle mass, heart size, lung capacity, core, testosterone levels, and I'm sure you're going to argue that we can adjust testosterone levels, which, fair enough, but these other factors are very difficult to adjust. And you know what, well, I'd say the that. only argument would be, like, perhaps a trans male to female who went through uh, puberty treatment before they went through puberty and did not get the increased, you know, heart mass and muscle mass and all of this, perhaps there could be an argument for that individual. But then, you know, we, we are bringing in an interesting question of could only trans individuals who have transitioned participate in sports? Are they only considered female 
when they have gone through these bodily changes, which I think runs counter to a lot of progressive narratives that actually, you know, sex well, hey, and gender you want to talk are different. To those other progressives. Well, if you want to talk to those other progressives, you're certainly welcome to. So do you I think that being them, so. a transgender individual necessarily includes bodily change, surgery, and hormone treatments? Of course not, but I think if you want to compete in sport, yeah, absolutely. Like I have two okay. degrees in exercise science, so of course I, mean, I understand the like biological realities of like why there is a sex separation, why there's sex categorization. I don't seem to get rid of that because I know enough about exercise physiology and understand why that categorization is there. Now this has nothing to do with whether or not trans women are women. Like if you uh, like not to go undergoing any sort of hormone replacement therapy, you're still a woman. But I do, do think that that would equate to like some sort of performance enhancement that would be unfair. Kind of like how a man who takes uh, steroids is still a man, even though he's like doing hyper man stuff. He's not more of a man for taking te uh, testosterone ex exogenously, but he's, that's obviously an unfair sports advantage. However, like in the primary difference between men and women is that testosterone, is the increased protein synthesis that results in more muscle mass at the same body weights. Uh, that's a, you know, that's, that's the primary difference that we that's the primary reason we have sex separation in the first place mm -hmm. a lot of these other factors like for example you, you point out lung size lung size also really isn't a factor like lung capacity isn't a meaningful limiting factor in any sports performance other than like some ultra endurance athletes and things like weightlifting lung capacity obviously doesn't matter in most team sports lung capacity is not going to be a factor because that's not going to be what limits you like uh, there are plenty of studies out there uh, looking at the sex differences uh you know between like men and women mm -hmm. with lung capacity and there's no they like all of them say like yeah like whatever lung size you got unless there's something wrong you have enough lung capacity to uh, initiate the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange at, at your alveoli but that's not gonna be a factor and other things like bone density that's also not really a factor like black women have denser bones than white men we wouldn't consider them to have a biological advantage because bones are not contractile tissue bones are not going to okay uh, you know impart force into something so it's it's just a matter of do you have enough bone density to not well, get injured Cool. Clearly, there is a difference even after hormone. They've, they've already studied this, and maybe you've seen the study and want to give me different of information, course. but they've done a study uh, after two years of, te of testosterone or estrogen treatment for trans um, male to female and found that... So here, I'll just read this to you. Da -da 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 -da. They had records on the subjects when they started testosterone or estrogen. The type of hormone used in the number of days from treatment began to when their hormone levels reached the normal adult range for a cisgender yeah, person. I'm familiar. For the first two years after starting hormones, when trans women in their review were able trans women in their review were able to do 10% more push-ups and 6% more sit-ups than their cisgender female counterparts. After two years, Is this the one uh, published in the like what was it, Brazilian or British Journal of Medicine, the one on the uh, army pilot. Yeah, so well, Air this Air is Air. yeah Air Force. Well, well, so they one, said this, this their running true. times declined, but trans women were still twelve percent faster on the one point five mile run than their cisgender yeah, but, well, peers. Yeah, well, hold on, you, you made a mistake there. You made a mistake there. Like they were doing equivalent, the equivalent amount of push-ups. They were doing the same amount of push-ups. Statistically, they were doing the same amount of push-ups as their cis counterparts. Parts, which which says to me like yeah like this is a body weight comparison this is a very good uh, strength comparison because it's like yeah if they're larger they're going to have to be able to you know uh, the trans people in these studies are often larger they're often taller uh, and so you need an apples to apples comparison so you need to do something that is relative to body size because a five nine cis woman would not be considered like enormously large but the average differences are going to account for like a, a larger person regardless of whether they're cis or trans, is going to have more muscle on their frame. That's just a matter of like the, how like skeletons work. Now, there is something to be said. Like, yeah, the uh, running times were significantly like higher than their cis counterparts. And they uh, have they speculate that, that might be due to the, the height advantage. And yeah, this actually could be something worth talking about. Mm -hmm. But the main reason we have sex differences in the first place is because of that increase in protein synthesis leading to higher muscle mass per pound, like pound for pound. Okay, so here's uh, a question for you then. This, okay, so besides all of this stuff, sure. Let's say that we can realistically balance out bodily hormones, uh, bone mass, whatever it is, through using science people can get tons of injections why have women and men sports at all why not put them together and have well, for people the just adjust I their hormones to be more similar if they want well, to play for the sports. reasons i explicitly told you all right so we're not going to expect people to like get exogenous uh, a hormonal treatment in order to compete okay, so what if i as a woman who identifies as a woman wants to play in male sports should i be allowed to do that or do i have to transition to do that I think that there's an interesting conversation to be had about like an open versus a closed category. And I think that's how most sports work anyway. If you're a woman and you want to compete with the men, I think that that's fine. 
they have an open category. Do you think that uh, if we did this and 50 years from now, uh, we, we began seeing more, I mean, we've already begun it. Uh, do you think 50 years from now, we will see more successful athletes that were male to female trans athletes or female to male trans athletes in men's probably categories? Female to, uh, sorry, probably male to female, but I don't see how that's any like, that's a bad thing. Wouldn't you say that's a bit of an indicator of the biological differences we were just discussing and how it's be. yeah and that's why we have differences that's why we but have the reason we have sex, categories but a lot of those are not due to the things that you're talking about like again like height like it sucks we don't have height divisions in any sports like you can't use that well, as you have weight divisions in some sports we have weight divisions we have weight divisions yes because weight matters more because if you are like the reason you wouldn't put uh, a man and a woman like a cis man and cis woman against each other in sort of like a weight category is because pound for pound the man is always going to be stronger like well, well on average they're going to be stronger because they can carry far less uh, fat on their frame so at that weight they can carry far more muscle so that's why that's more important but things like height yeah height can be an advantage in some sport it could be a disadvantage in others uh, lung size doesn't seem to be a limiting factor in any other sport as long as you're healthy as long as there's nothing wrong with your lungs you're going to have plenty of surface area for that oxygen exchange, and that's usually not what limits you anyway. Um, a lot of the other factors, like hemoglobin, hemoglobin responds very quickly to hormonal treatment. So when uh, uh, a trans woman goes on hormone replacement therapy, within six to 12 months, her hormone levels, her hemoglobin levels are in line with cis women. So that oxygen carrying capacity has been like reduced down to like normal like cis levels. But you can't so, use uh, hormones to reduce heart size and lung size. That's not possible. And like when again, I'm looking at the size, study, when they say they can run... 12% faster even matter, after said, two per, two years of hormone treatment like it, yeah, it doesn't all of these things matter. that you're saying where we can adjust things what you lung size said, doesn't matter in sports you don't think nope all right lung size does not matter in terms of it is not a limiting factor in sports performance it, it Lauren, I'll, get, I'll give you a quick uh go ahead and respond to that and jangles go ahead and shout yourself out this would be a good idea for you to do, do a lung long capacity in swimmers <sighs> you can look at that i I have two degrees in exercise science. I can tell you what that means and what that says. Sure. I mean, perhaps you're right here, but you know what? I would love no, to no get perhaps about it. Uh, well, I need to read the study. I'm not going to just take your word for it. Well, you like... can, well, you know, I, don't read my word for it, but also consider like, do you think you, you reading one study is going to like now our knowledge levels? You know, denying that? like you've just sat here and said, if we what just change hormone levels, you know, that's going to make people equivalent enough. But that's I going, that's going to reduce it. Height, to, uh, lung size, heart size. You keep after saying going lung through size. the muscle mass, these are all. You keep saying okay, lung size. Fine, we can take that out. Remove lung size. I need right, to read you also keep study. saying muscle mass is, is if it's not enormously affected by hormones. It is, but not completely. I've just read you a study that shows that they still I've run. I've read more studies faster. on this than you, and yeah, muscle mass is okay, like reduced so down to comparable levels. I, I'd, you know what? This is the thing. Here's even if. Even if we were able to make people completely identical biologically, and this is what it comes down to, it, maybe you are right about every single aspect of this. I would still be against it. And the reason is because I think the yeah. social factors of accepting the sexes as biologically similar is extremely dangerous. And I can have I that am, conversation another day. But I do I do appreciate that you just admitted that the science is less important than the social implications of it. So you're motivated to find science that agrees with you because the real motivation is to make sure that the sexes are separated and the genders are That's separated. That's not true. I'm gl you just admitted to it. That's you, not you true. Even if everything was – even if the science was completely on my side, even if you accepted that the science was completely on my side, you'd still be against it because of social reasons. You just admitted that. The I'll social lie. impacts of saying that the sexes – can be made to be exactly the same when they cannot. They will never be made to be exactly the same through Both hormone addiction. treatments, anything. The, the reason it's called, so we're talking about sex right now, not gender, right? Because even some of the most radical progressives I talk to admit sex is different. You are never, do you think that we are going to get to a point? I know we're not there right now where you can have men give birth to children, like biological men who produce sperm, give birth to children through a womb like do you think that's possible in sport. i'm saying that the social implications of trying to push the fact or, or the idea rather the notion that men and women are biologically the same i think is severely uh disruptive to our societal understanding of sex I think you okay, J Jangles, Jangles, real quick, respond to that and then shut yourself up. We've got over time. Lauren, I just messaged I Jangles. 
Django's agreed to do this if you want to do a 1v1 long form and go all out on this because I, I think this is something both yeah because I want to read those studies yeah. I've got them open here so I'll go ahead and set that up with Jingles, but go ahead, Jingles, respond to that and go ahead and shut yourself out. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll leave it as a little, little cliffhanger. So, hi everyone. All right, we Justin. can chat again. We can have a chat again. It'll be fun. Uh, my name is Justin. I have a YouTube channel called Jingles Science Lab. One of the videos on there uh, is making use of my useless degree in my useless master's degree in biomechanics uh, with a huge 75 source long video going into the science behind trans people in sport. If you would like to go check that out. I will. I'm looking forward right. to it. Hi, everyone. All right, later, Jingles. All right, so I do want to, I, I do want to make a comment about this to my audience after because um, I've talked about this a bit. I still have yet in this community to be given a legitimate response to my questions about transracialism. 